Welcome to a short tutorial about how to use Storygami for video annotation. You'll need to create an account on Storygami, which is pretty straightforward. Um, you'll probably get a, an email asking uh, for confirmation that your email is correct, so you'll need to do that to fully activate, activate your account. And here we go. You'll get to this initial pricing plan. We're just going to use the free plan so you don't have to worry about um, signing up for anything else that costs any money. And so let's start by just going straight to projects up here at the top. This is where we're going to create our video annotation. So to create our first project, we're going to click on this little yellow pencil icon over here. And this is going to ask us to choose a theme. Basically, these are all the same, except that there are different colors, and you can choose any theme that you like. I kind of like the standard gray one, so I'm going to choose Obelix. It compliments us on our choice. Thank you very much. And now let's title our project. I'm going to call it Annotation Project. And then here's where you'll enter a video URL. I'm going to just paste in the YouTube URL for Detroit 9000 and hit Let's Go. Okay, so the video automatically load here into this interface for Storygami. And so what we have here, we can just play our YouTube video. And it starts just like a normal YouTube video. And then over here on the left, we have several different options we can choose from. For the annotation project, we're just going to use this option called article. And so what we'll do is play through the video until we get to a point where we want to say something. So let's say I'm interested in this frame right here. I want to start saying something about the film. I'm going to grab, um, just click and drag article from over here into this section. And it brings this up. So there's a few things to change here. Um, one of them is down below where it says article. I'm going to go ahead and give that a title. I'm just going to call it annotation one. I'm going to make sure that show in menu bar is highlighted uh, or clicked, as well as add interactive marker. So adding the interactive marker is going to make this little pop-up show up on the screen uh, when I want it to um, pop up for an annotation. It lets the viewer know that there's something there to click on. So make sure that you have add interactive checked and that make transparent is not checked because we want it to be visible. Okay, so you'll also see that when I've done this, this little gray box appears on the timeline, right? This is a timeline, this bar down here of where all your different annotations are going to go. And this annotation has defaulted to starting at zero, which is the very start of the video, and then ending at 15 seconds into the video. So that means that this little marker is going to be on the screen for 15 seconds. So if I go back to the, the start of the video, you'll see that that marker pops right up beginning of the video, right? That's where it's set to, to start. And then as we play our video, when it gets to 15 seconds down here, it's going to disappear. Okay, we may not want it up for that long, and we may not want it to start right then, right? When we um, initially were playing through our video, we wanted it to start a little bit earlier, right? Somewhere right in here. So we'll see from um, the video up here that that's at about 11 seconds into the video. So we can come down here and change our end time to 11 seconds. And we can maybe leave our out time at 15 seconds. So that means that our annotation is going to be on the screen for about four seconds. Okay, something really important to note right about now is that in order to see any of your changes really take effect, you have to hit this little refresh button over here. So if you're working on your annotation and you're like, my, I don't see my changes, I don't see what, I'm, what I've just done, make sure you hit the little green refresh button and that's going to your project. So now, if I hit play, the video starts over, and we should now see that at about 11 seconds, rather than right at the beginning, our little marker pops up. There it goes. Okay, so that's, that'll tell the viewer that, hey, there's an annotation, there's something that I want to say right at this moment in the film. Okay, now you're going to want to change the title of this marker as well. So it doesn't just say article, but actually contains some information about what people are going to see. So you'll see if I click on it um, right now, 
it opens up this window where I can add stuff. And I actually don't want that right now. I just want to be able to change the name of the uh, article right here on the marker. So you may have to toggle this little eye that's right next to the add interactive marker to bring it into an editing mode. And so you'll see that you get this, um, these sort of crosshairs here that indicate that now you can go in and change this marker. So now if I click on it, it gives me a cursor, I can delete it and say something as simple as annotation one, or I could be maybe a little bit more descriptive and say Detroit landmark, um, if you're going to be saying something about a Detroit landmark that's in the video. You can then also move this marker around. So if you want it to draw the viewer's eye to something in particular on the screen, you can place it somewhere else on the frame so that we know that you're really gonna be talking about something that's in that part of the frame. I know we get this little weird kind of duplication here. Um, in this case, I think that's just a little bug. And if we click, it'll go away. And again, if we start the video over again, we can just kind of scroll into about 11 seconds. Um, oops, let's try that again. And there we go, that, um, that little marker pops up right there. And again, you can go in and adjust the in time and out time anytime you want so that it pops up on screen at the moment when you um, are indicating that you wanna say something about what's going on in the film. Okay, so now you've just sort of, you've added a marker, but you haven't actually said anything about the film. You haven't added an annotation. So to add an annotation, and again, we're in annotation one down here at the bottom, you can just click edit content. And that brings up this window where again, we can add a title to what we wanna say. So we could maybe just say again, Detroit landmark. And then in the body text, we say something a little bit more substantial, um, some kind of analysis or observation about what's going on in the scene based on what the assignment has prompted you to talk about. So you can see we can just type in, um, this is where I'll add a paragraph about this frame or this scene in the film. And of course you have all kinds of editing tools up here so we can go in and uh, make something bold or we can italicize. You can add links, you can add images if you're feeling really ambitious and then click save. And again, let's refresh it, play our video. And again, when we scroll up to about uh, 11 seconds, our marker will pop up. Oops, I have to back up a little bit off. There, our marker pops up. I can click on that as a viewer, and then it takes us to what you've just written about that part of the, the film. Okay, so that's gonna be your annotation and you're gonna create a bunch of these. So to create a new annotation, again, I'm gonna go somewhere later in the video, say right here, I wanna say something that's at 55 seconds into the video. I come up here, I'm gonna grab the article layer again and drop it down underneath. And we just kind of start again. Um, I'm not going to type anything in here just yet. Instead, I'm gonna come down here to, um, well, first I'm gonna come down here and change the title annotation two. Again, make sure that that marker is visible. And here, again, we've um, stopped the video at 55 seconds in. So it defaults to zero, but I'm gonna go ahead and type in 55. And then again, I'll let it stay on screen for, let's say, um, five seconds. So it'll be on screen from 55 seconds in to 60 seconds in, and we can click refresh. And, um, oh, it's probably not registering at 60 seconds. I'll say one minute in, there we go. Okay, so um, uh, from 50 seconds to one minute in, and you'll see, again, we have a new little layer that's here on our timeline. Make sure that you hit refresh to see your changes. Let's scroll in to just before that 55 second mark. And there we go, our new marker is popping up. And then you just repeat the process, okay? So you'll change the title here. Um, you can hit edit content to go in and change um, your annotation or add your annotation, hit save, and keep repeating that process until you've added all of your annotations. You can also save this project, it will automatically save and come back to it and edit later. So you don't have to do everything all at once. Then when you are done and everything's ready to go, you come over here and click publish. 
and you're just going to be turning in a regular link to this project and so you'll come over here to direct link hit copy and that will automatically be copied to your computer's clipboard and then you can go into the appropriate canvas assignments hit paste and that direct link will um, take whoever's using it, in this case me, directly to your project where I can see your annotations. And that will be, uh, then you can just kind of hit done. So if you ever want to go back to this project um, and edit it, you can come up here and just click projects. And here it is. Um, and then you can just hit edit. And it takes you back. And you The one last thing I'll show you is that Everything that you create, as long as you have show in menu bar, is ticked down here. If you come up to this little button up here in the corner, click that, it will show a menu of all your different annotations. So you can really easily just jump from one annotation to the next and double check your work. So that's another way of, I haven't added anything to this annotation, but if I had, it would show up here. So that's another just easy way of navigating through all your annotations. Okay. There you go. Hope you uh, found this tutorial useful.